What's going on, everybody? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? How's everybody doing? I think we're live now. I think I'm live. So real, real soon, real quickly here, in the beginning, I wanted to do color mixing, just like an overview for somebody had some questions about color mixing, and I uh, figured it'd be cool to do. So that's what I'm going to start out with, just a small little sheet here, and I got it lined up so we could see the palette. Uh, but it's not going to be anything complicated. We're gonna, I'm going to simplify it, keep it simple uh, as best I can. Just share with you what I know about it. But, uh, glad to hear everybody's doing well. What's going on? Enrique, Deborah, what's happening? Volcanic. Everybody, what's happening? Gourmet Kitchen, what's going on? Everybody's tuning in. Cool. Cool, so let's just get started here, uh, not waste any time. Try not to waste any time. So this is watercolor, but it really doesn't matter. This is, this is just an overview of color mixing. This can be done with any kind of paint. So. Sounds good, Deborah. Skipped work tonight, just relaxing. Cool, cool. Well, hopefully, uh, I don't know if you do any painting, so this might not be that useful to you, but I'm just gonna wet some of my paint here so we can uh, get an idea. I can get started. So I'm basically, I'm only, I'm not gonna use all these colors. Um, Probably not orange. Some magenta here. And we're going to do some color studies after this. Just some small, I got some small, uh, really small things lined up here, like two of these. So maybe we can try like two different kinds of color schemes of the same exact scene. Just as like a a little exercise, put the color mixing to the test, try to see what kind of um, kind of moods and feelings I can get from different, you know, how changing the color scheme of, of a scene can give you a different feel, a different vibe. Thanks, Cam Williams, I appreciate it. Um, I want to learn to use watercolor, but I'm too lazy. Well, there you go. Well, you're not going to learn watercolor then, I guess. Uh, no worries, a Amy. No worries at all. Is it wrong just to use 2B pencil? Uh, no, it's not wrong. It's not wrong if you just want to use like a toothbrush to draw or to paint or whatever. You know, like, there's nothing wrong. It's just you're not going to be able to get really dark with that. Uh, I mean, in 2B you could get pretty dark. I mean, you could do some really good drawings with just a 2B pencil. So, so check it out. Let's start out with, this is very simple. We're gonna start out with just the primary colors. So I'm sure most of us know what the primary colors are, hopefully, for painting. Anybody out there know it? Know the primaries? So generally what that means, these primary colors, is like, it means these colors can't be mixed. Like these colors you have to use, these are the base of the color wheel basically. You can't mix these from any other colors. Now it's kind of controversial. There's two different kinds of primaries you can use. So I'm gonna to try to go over both of those and they give you different results. So but I'll give you the basic overview. So one of the primaries is blue, right? Now it's controversial what kind of blue, you know, just think of it as blue. It could be any blue you want. Uh, the next primary is yellow. Like I said, we're starting out from the very beginning. This is very basic, just to get an idea. We got blue, we got yellow, and then we got red. 
Now this is one version of the primaries you can use. Okay. That red is a little bit weak. Let's darken that up a bit. So when I started painting years ago, like 10 years ago ish, nine to 10 years ago, I used red, yellow, and blue and white. Like when I, I used acrylics and also I did this with oil painting as well. I used red, yellow, and blue and white for like the first five years of my painting journey. Like my paintings only had red, yellow, blue, and white. Sometimes I had like a brown in there, I would add. But for the most part, I used this for five years. Like I really started understanding color mixing and color harmony and all this stuff. Um, are you doing one specific landscape or are you doing just value using watercolor? Uh, so I'm going to be doing this landscape, this reference photo. I'm going to be doing this landscape, pretty small, we're just a small study, but I'm going to be doing it multiple times using different color schemes. So not really about value or anything, it's about color and feeling and, and seeing how tweaking a little bit of the colors, doing different color schemes give you a different mood, a different feeling to the landscape. So just playing around with color a bit. So this is one version of the primary. So let's say if we mix these together, let's just, so if you mix blue, so if we get some, get some blue, and then we mix it with yellow. I mean, this is simple stuff, folks, but I know most of you probably know this stuff. Mix it with some yellow. What do you got there? Looks like we're getting some green. So these are, these. I'm, what I'm gonna be mixing, these are the secondary colors on the color wheel. I had a color wheel somewhere actually, like a physical color wheel. But like I said, this is very simple. I'm just going over this really quickly because somebody wanted to know about this. So now if you mix yellow with red, a little bit of red, because red's pretty strong. Gonna get orange. Okay. So this is how you should think about color. Like when you're starting out painting, try using just these three colors. You know, if you're using acrylics or oil paint, use white with it, of course. You're always gonna use white. But watercolor, you don't really need white. You just use water to make it a little bit lighter. And then if you mix, uh, of course, red and blue can't be next to each other, but I'm still gonna put them down on here. So if we mix blue, I'm going to put it on this side because it's a cooler tone that it's going to end up getting. Blue and red, you're going to get a purple. So just with these three colors, these are the kind of colors we can mix very basically, very basic, very, very basic. And now from here, I mean, this is where you can go crazy with this stuff. Like, okay, I think I missed some... Uh, some uh, questions here. What is the difference between paint in tubes and dry cakes? Uh, you know, I don't really know when you buy the dry cakes. I don't know what the difference is, but what I fill out here is straight from the tube. Um, I have two paints and then I just pour them in here and then they end up drying and that's how I use it. I don't really know what the actual difference is. Is green also considered a primary color? No, it's not. Green is a secondary color. And there's also, there's also tertiary colors. Uh, tertiary colors are what you would call, so let's do, let's, it seems there's confusion here, so let's just do it. So tertiary colors would be, so from this orange, you could have it lean towards yellow or red. So you could have yellow orange, so it'd be more yellow with just a tiny bit of red. even though I didn't do that very well. So we get a lot more yellow, a lot more yellow. So you have yellow orange and then you have, like I just said, mo mostly red with a little bit of yellow. You have red orange. 
So these are tertiary colors. These are ones that are a little more subtle, mixed from the secondary colors. So usually when you do a painting, most paintings are, uh, you know, they're, they're mostly tertiary colors. And, and I think that's what's so difficult about painting is, is people don't understand like these subtleties uh, when you go to mix something. And you, you do the same thing with the green. You can have green, yellow, green, blue, green. So let's do it real quick. So have some blue and then just a little bit of yellow. You're going to get blue, green, you know, a cooler green. So basically it's like it's kind of like having a warm and cool of every secondary color kind of um, for the most part. I mean obviously these are all warm but relatively this one's a little bit warmer than this one because it's, it's more red. And then here if you use mostly yellow with just a little bit of blue more yellow you can have a yellow green. So you can see there's three different kinds of oranges, greens, purples uh, so on and on and on. I'm not going to do the purple. I think you guys get it. You can have red, violet, blue, violet. Uh, it's very simple, very basic. And this is how you create these subtleties in, in a scene. You got to have a little bit more yellow in something, a little bit more orange in something, you know. Uh, how long does it take for watercolor to dry? It depends on the weather. It depends on how much water you use. depends on your paper. It depends on a lot of factors. Uh, you know, I, I paint it outside when it's like a hundred like degrees outside. It dries super quickly, like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. I paint it in the shade when it's 50 degrees outside. It takes about, you know, 15 minutes. <laughs> so it just depends. Uh, what's today's stream about? Uh, the title says Color Mixing and Color Studies and Watercolor. So I'm just going over basic water color mixing right now. If you mix black with any color to make it look darker, would it look good? Or should you use something like brown and blue to make it look better? Okay, we can talk about that. So, someone, someone answered that question and said, opposite color on color wheel to make color darker. That's one way to do it. Uh, it it's kind of difficult, so you don't usually want to use black to make something darker. Like, so if you want to make yellow look darker, you don't want to mix black into it because it's not going to, it's just not going to work. It's just not going to look good. Uh, you're going to get like a greenish type of color. Um, can we use primary colors to paint skin tones easily? Yeah, you can. If you mix them all together equally uh, or a certain, you know, a certain way. Let me see if we can do that. So let's see if we can get a skin tone color. Uh, let me mix this on the palette just so I don't put it all on the paper. So let's clean off a spot real quick. Let's try to get a skin tone with red, yellow, and blue. I haven't even gotten into the secondary, the second type of primaries you can use, guys. I, I gotta get it, I gotta, I didn't realize there'd be so many questions about color mixing. Cause this stuff to me, it's very simple. It's very intuitive. It's a very, it, it just comes naturally. Like it's just, it's all common sense kind of. Once you understand this basic stuff, I mean, it's really common sense. You know, if you want to make a color darker, you kind of want to use a color that's closest to that color. So like if you want to darken yellow, like you want to use something that's that's like an orange, like a brown, like a like a brown. So like a, a blue and an orange together to 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 darken a yellow, you know, like a, a an orange, like a brown color. If you want to darken red, you could use uh what would darken red? You know, green can darken red. That's the opposite color on the color wheel. Um, I should have did these in a wheel fashion so you guys could actually know the color wheel. Just look up color wheel. You guys get the idea about this. So let's say if we if we want to get a skin tone, we have blue, a little bit of red, some yellow. So this is how I'd mix colors. So look right away, you're getting some kind of skin tone there, some kind of brown. See that? If you need to make it cooler, add a little bit of blue. You need it to be warmer, you could add some red. You need it to be more yellow, add yellow. Um, so let's see what this looks like on the paper. So if we were to paint this, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a dead skin tone looking color. So we can slightly warm that up. 
yellow and red, small touch of blue. You know, it's, it's definitely more difficult to mix your own skin tones like this. I would just recommend using like transparent red oxide, but it probably needs to be a bit lighter. There we go. You know, something like that could be a skin tone. You know, that's more like shadows. So yeah, you can definitely get skin tone. That's just red, yellow, and blue. Um, boom, right there. You know, it just depends on how light you want it. You can get, you can make it, like I said, you can make it cooler. Okay, if you need to, you can make it more yellow and more red, warm. So that's how you can get a skin tone. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's say if we want to darken red. So let's say we have red. If you ha if you just mix into it blue and yellow, so if you have like green, so now we have a green, we mix a red into that. It does darken it. Obviously when you darken colors, you're gonna get a grayed down color. You're not gonna get a pure dark red. It's just not, uh, it's not how it works really. And now if you wanted to, normally I'd tell beginners, if you're new to color mixing, to stay away from black because most beginners don't know how to use it. Usually they overuse it. It's just not a good, it's not normally a good thing to do to overuse. See, so there's kind of like a dark red. So if you mix a lot more blue into it and then more red back into it, you know, you can get a pretty dark, I mean, this is more of like a dark red. You know, just from color mixing, that's what the dark red's gonna look like. Uh, and we just use the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. That's all we used. Now, if you know, okay, if if you've been painting for a while, you're pretty good at color mixing. You know, try mixing some black into that experiment. You can try darkening this a bit with some black. But let's see what black actually does to this. Cools it off. Really cooled it. I mean, look at that. It doesn't even look like red anymore. Look how much cooler that looks. Uh, so it just really grayed it down. But if you have red and red and black, yeah, you can get a very dark kind of red like that. But it's just different. It's hard to tell on here. But this is much cooler uh, than this one. So, you know, it just depends on what you're going for. Uh, you just got to be careful with black. Really be careful with black. Try to avoid that if you can. Uh, because it's just, it's not... Uh, especially if you're doing landscapes and stuff. Most landscapes, you're not going to see like a pure black. Mostly it's a very warm color. Very warm dark. So like I said, I mean, if you're just starting out beginner, I would really recommend just using these three colors to start out with. Do like 10 or 20 paintings with just those colors. Get used to just mixing your own kind of colors. Cause then if you want to start using more colors like greens and browns and stuff, you got to know what's going to happen when you mix other colors into them. Uh, you know, it took me a long time to, to be confident to expand my palette the way I've done it. You know, now I have a purple, I have a magenta, cyan, brown, green, you know, two different kinds of blue, uh, an orange, you know, I just, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta really practice before you expand to this level. So there's another kind of, of primaries that other folks tend to say that's more of a pure primaries. So you can use cyan, like some kind of cyan color, which is like a turquoise, like a really strong blue. Um, some people would also use like phthalo blue, which I have here, which I almost never ever use because it's, it's just so strong. So some people use that as like their other blue, but you can see how strong that, it's so staining and it's so strong, I don't really use it that much at all. Um, it's kind of something I don't even want on my palette. I might get rid of that to be honest, but I have a whole tube of it. I'm not really sure what to do. Okay, so that's one other blue we can use. And then for the yellow, you can still just use yellow. You know, there's different kinds of yellow you can try out, but just try to get a neutral, basic, medium yellow. 
And then the other for red, instead of using red, you can use a magenta. I have a permanent alizarin crimson here. So you can see the kind of the difference you get with the primaries here. Now if we mix these together, so if we mix some of these primaries together, let's see what kind of secondaries we get. So if we mix this blue, this cyan or whatever, I think this is cobalt teal, it's not technically like a cyan, but I'm just trying to demonstrate, you can use different blues and different reds, different yellows, and you can get different kind of secondary. So you see how ultramarine in this red creates such more grayer type of uh, secondaries. And this is, this is a lot stronger. You know, we're using a stronger blue here, so we're gonna get a stronger color, color green. Stronger green color, excuse me. Um, And the same can be said with this magenta, you know, this alizarin crimson. It's a much stronger color. So when we mix these two together, you have to be careful because you only want to use a little bit of that strong color. Um, but let's say we mix these two together, or try to. <laughs> that color is so strong. Uh, let's try to take some of that off. So if we mix yellow into that, Yeah, it's interesting. It's actually just with the way these two colors mix, it's almost like this one is less of a powerful orange than that. You know, that's a little too red, I guess, too pinkish. But you almost get a more grayed orange, which is uh, interesting. So yeah, I mean, you get different different secondaries from different primaries, obviously. And now if we mix this turquoise blue with the magenta. You're gonna get, what are we gonna get? Different kind of purple probably. Actually, uh, the interesting thing here, because these aren't really true primaries that I have on my palette anyway, they're kind of, they just kind of look like it. So this almost becomes like a gray color. It is kind of purple but uh, they don't really mix too well. I did a painting with just these two colors, I think, in the past. It was really cool, it came out really cool. But see, we also get way different purple than, than this is a much grayer purple, because these two colors kind of neutralize each other. They're almost, they're really like opposites on the color wheel to some extent. Um, so, like I said, stronger green, but you know, maybe a grayer orange, grayer purple. Uh, but here we have a gray or green because the ultramarine is more of a reddish blue. Um, so purple and yellow are opposites on the color wheel and they kind of, they tend to make a gray. So hope this all makes sense to you guys. Uh, Veek Ryder, thank you for the three ninety nine. dollars I greatly appreciate it. Uh, they say thank you. That helps a lot regarding skin tones. Yeah, no problem. Uh, skin tones, I mean, that's something we can talk about. We could talk about that for, that's like a whole nother video topic, you know. But this is really a skin tone. I mean, you can get an easy skin tone with red, yellow, and blue. I would suggest getting like transparent red oxide. So this kind of brown color. You can get a real easy uh, skin tone with this. I mean, you could almost just use this by itself. So all, already, just from mixing that, you get a really nice reddish. So if we put this down, I mean, that's really a skin tone. You know, and then all you have to do, if you need like a cooler, more gray looking skin tone, like for part of it, you just take a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of blue. And if you mix just a little bit of blue into that brown, it grays it down very easily. So this is what I'm saying, like once you practice with the primaries enough, then you can just, you know, start adding a brown in to your palette and then see how that brown reacts to all the other primaries and then once you get comfortable with that okay try adding a green now and then now see how the green reacts with the rest of your palette and the brown and uh, but see now if we put this down it's a little bit darker a little bit grayer it's not as warm so that's a super and that's pretty close to what I mixed earlier you know and even then you can you know if you want to you can add more yellow into it or red see you can play around with all these colors but really this transparent red oxide is like a really good color for uh, skin tones. 
So that's kind of what I recommend. Because using brown and, and blue is, is, is very simple. You know, you can get a very cool gray. If you mix them both together kind of equally, you know, you get a, you get a gray color. Um, that's really how I get like an earthy black. That's usually why uh, most of the time I mix my own black like that. But um, <clears throat> can you discuss how to use water effectively with different techniques? Okay, what um, Cubs win? Can you expand a little bit on that question? Um, what What do you mean by using water? Do you mean like wet into wet, or what? What do you What do you struggle with when it comes to water and techniques, different techniques? I just want to I just want to be able to answer your question a little bit more, you know, fully. Uh, if I'm going to demonstrate something, but this should I mean hopefully this makes sense, guys. This is very simple stuff, and like from these tertiaries and secondaries, I mean you can get brown colors and gray colors, so most likely you're going to get browns. So let's say you have, if you mix orange, which is yellow and red, okay? If you get orange, yellow and red, right? And then you use, the only remaining color to use is blue. So we're using orange, which is yellow and red, and now we're gonna mix blue into it, see what happens, right? So we're gonna mix all three primaries together. Let's see what happens. So this is something we haven't done yet. I mean, we, we were only mixing two colors together. All these colors are just the two of the primaries. Now we're gonna mix all three. Let's see what happens. So orange and blue, you mix these together. Now it turned green, so why did that happen? It turned green because the mixture mostly had yellow and blue in it. So if we mix a little bit more red into it, boom, you get like a grayish brown. See that kind of color there? So if I put this near these secondaries up here, you can see it's like, it's very gray. So if you mix all of them together, you get a gray. Now, since I have this gray, I can, I can kind of bend it any way I want. If I want more of a red gray, I can put red into it. If I wanted like a blue or gray, I can put more blue into it, etc., etc., etc. That's how you get these subtleties in color mixing. It's very simple. If you just keep it very, very simple, you always realize that no matter what kind of color you're mixing, it's always the three primaries, like, or just two of them if you want like a stronger color. If you want a really strong color, like a strong orange, strong green, strong purple, just mix two of them together. Uh, let's see magenta is the friendship destroyer color <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> friendship destroyer color I'm not sure what that means cerulean blue is good but it granulates so it depends on what characteristics you're looking for it's true I don't have cerulean blue so I can't demonstrate that unfortunately um Yeah, so to donate through here, there's like, there should be where you type in the type in to the chat, there should be like a dollar sign or like an emoji thing and a dollar sign thing and whatever. So that's how you do it. Um, wet into dry, mostly avoiding hard edges. Also amount of pigment for soft, hard. Okay, so... Okay, so you said wet into dry mostly. Okay, so this is dry up here, so we can just, I'll demonstrate right on top of this. Hopefully that works for you. Uh, I'm not really sure. And I can do some of that when we do the color studies here soon. I don't want to talk too much more about, I've been 30 minutes now talking about color mixing, so hopefully this helped you guys out there, somebody. 
Oh, Matias says, because everyone fights about that is magenta. No, it's not. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, all right, so avoiding... So, okay, let's do wet into dry. So this is dry. This is a little bit wet still. Not much, but okay, this is pretty dry. So now if I'm going to paint wet into that... Uh, and you want to avoid a hard edge on that, right? Like on some of it. So here, I'll, I'll show you kind of what I would do. So let's pick a dark color to go into that. So I'll just do like a blue. Some kind of blue color. A little bit less water than this mixture, but it doesn't really matter. So, so if I paint something here, like let's say I'll just paint like whatever, something like this. So I have mostly all hard edges. I mean, a little bit of soft there, but not much. So now I'm going to clean my brush and wipe it off. Try to just have like a damp brush. So if I wanted softer edges on some of this, I'd use this damp brush. And it's not wet at all. A little bit, a little damp, but clean. You know, and you just like blend it out. And you could use, you could probably, you know, you could even wet the surface first before you paint into it. I'm going to see what happens if I add a little bit of water. So if you just add a little bit of water and then clean your brush off, wipe it off. See, if you add water, you start getting like blooms into it, which you don't really want usually. Yeah, it's it's difficult. It's It takes a lot of like... It takes a lot of finessing and it just takes a lot of practice. See, like even now it looks, it looks like what I did sucks. So like, <laughs> even I don't really know. It, it, it's, it's probably better when I'm actually painting something rather than just painting something uh, random like this. But let's say, let's say I'm going to wet this first up here. And now if I paint into that with some color. It's going to be much softer. See, you avoid hard edges like that. So really one of the ways to avoid hard edges is wet into wet. But by doing that, you lose control. So let's see. Let's try to demonstrate it again. So I'm going to do wet into dry. So let's take this blue is probably a hard color, but that's okay. Let's do it. So if I'm painting something, what would I paint? Let's like try to paint a square or something. Something like a hard shape. Okay, rectangle. And I wanted to soften some of that. I would just gently touch one of the edges. There you go. And all I did was wipe off my brush. I cleaned it, wiped it off. It's still kind of damp. And then I just lightly touch it. So now you get a soft edge there, a hard edge over here. We can try to soften like half of this one. Let's see what happens. So sometimes more colors are are more staining than others. So you'll still see like this blue seems like it was more staining. So it's hard to take up, pick up some of that pigment. See, I can kind of almost get a gradient here if I would just like kind of finesse some of that pigment. So it's just playing around with these kind of effects like I'm doing now. Just try to do a few paintings and really just try to push the softness, try to play around with things like that. Um, Lorinda, thank you for the $5. Greatly appreciated. They say, thank you. That was really helpful. I feel more confident now with mixing colors. Cool. If anybody has any questions, any more questions about color mixing, just let me know. I'm, I'm happy to go a little bit more in depth into maybe some more advanced color mixing. Um, just let me know. Yeah, I mean, you can get soft stuff doing wet into dry. It's just, it's more of, uh, you know, this, see, this got really soft, and that was wet into wet. This is wet on dry. You get really hard edges. 
and then kind of some crappy stuff here because I added more water. If you add more water, like you're going to get like a bloom, um, which isn't really, usually isn't really a desired effect. Or if you, you know, you can get these softer edges if you just you really finesse it a little bit, play around with it. But uh, it's, it's challenging. It's just it's something challenging. You kind of have to plan out what you want to do. Um, Someone asks, uh, do you ever work with not so expensive paints? Uh, not anymore, but I did in the past. When I first started out like two years ago. Actually, you know what, That this, uh, I'll show you guys real quickly here. I'd have to go look at my old videos from 2018, but I think this whole sketchbook my England verse, England, England, and Paris sketchbook. These were all, I think almost all of these were inexpensive paints. These were not expensive. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I had bought really expensive paints at this point, maybe like one or two colors or a few colors, but a lot of this that I painted with was uh, inexpensive paint. So yeah, I, I definitely did in the past and I just slowly bought, you know, I bought like the primaries first and then I bought a brown and then I just started experimenting with more colors and I, I've got more high quality paints. So yeah, I wanted, what I wanted to do, I used almost all the inexpensive paint that I had at the time. And then I started using just more expensive paint. So is transparent red oxide the same in most mediums that can be mixed? Yeah, it kind of, uh, yeah, yeah. It's very, it's very similar. At least uh, in oil paint, it's very similar. And I think in acrylic, I use transparent red oxide as well. A very similar color through all the, the mediums, no matter what kind of medium you're using. Can you recommend any watercolor paintbrush sets for a beginner? paint brush sets like like a like brushes i mean just uh whatever use any brushes you can you know any brushes you can for a beginner like when i started out i was using some crappy brushes that i had laying around these cheap brushes i use these for uh many years, like those first two years. I only recently bought these brushes. I bought these brushes back in January. So I was using these crappy brushes. You can see in my, in my paintings, in my videos, my plein air adventure videos, I was using these for almost two years, these crappy brushes. And then I decided to invest a little bit, get some nicer, more expensive brushes. You know, I bought this one recently as well. This, I bought this one back in August uh, on a trip. So yeah, any kind of brushes will do, especially when you're just starting out. It's it's like, it, basically if you can get like a flat and a filbert and a round and like just play around, see, like try to get used to. So what, what I try to think about with materials, I get used to how the materials react and how they they work. So if I'm using crappy paint or crappy paper, which I used crappy paper in the past, let me, I have a sketchbook I can show you guys. Uh, let me see real quick. So. Sorry about that folks, but. I just want to demonstrate to you guys, like this was really my first planar, uh, actually this was my second planar sketchbook, but this is crappy paper. This is, uh, it's acid free, cold press, 140 pound, blah, blah, blah. But it's not cotton. It's not 100% cotton. It's like some kind of pulp paper. It's not that great, especially when you see, I'll show you guys here, like the quality of the paintings. So very hard to get soft edges. And these kind of, uh, you can tell the, the paper just takes the paint. It's not as absorbent 
So you just get different effects. I mean, the paintings still look great. I still was happy with what I was doing. Uh, painted some geese from life. That was pretty cool. But you can see, it's just, it's not as subtle. The water isn't, the paper didn't absorb the water. It left all these hard edges everywhere. Um, also, I didn't really know what I was doing a lot of the time. But um, once you get used to how the paper works, you can create some, some things that look decent. And I think it's the same with, with paint brushes, you know. Um, it's just trying to figure out how the brushes work. And, and how you need to use them to make them work. That's how I always thought about everything. See, I didn't really know what I was doing. I kept like painting into stuff. Like I did get some soft edges here nicely, some nice blends and stuff, but you know, I struggled with that, with that kind of, this kind of crappier paper. Uh, it's just a struggle. But once you get used to how it reacts, it's, uh, you know, you get better. You get better. It just takes time. That's all. You just have to adapt to the materials. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for smaller stuff, you know, a number 10 round. This is a number 8 mop. This is a number 16 round. So, it depends on how big you want to paint. Depends on a whole bunch of different factors. But just try to, not, like, don't think about it too much. But none of these are, like, bristle. They're very soft. Hairs. They're not bristle brushes. They're more of like sable or synthetic. Um, yeah, those brushes I used for a few years, like all those sketchbooks I've done, like these are all like synthetic hairs. They're not like any high quality hair or anything. Um, so it's possible. It's possible to do. It just might take more of a challenge to do that. Did you tape the edges in the sketchbook? Yes, I did. Uh, which expensive brand of paint do you use now? I use M. Graham paints. I've shown those before. They're made in the they're made in the U.S., so you might not be able to find them where you are. I think you're in South America or something, right? So, yeah, I use M. Let's see if I can zoom this in. M. Graham and Company. See that? So that's what I use now. So I got a whole, that's all my palette right there. The only color that's not in Graham is this kind of white color that I use very rarely. It's by Holbein, but it's right here, this white color. I don't use that too often, but uh, I just wanted like a warm white, so that's what I got. <clears throat> okay, okay. Let's try to get through these questions here. That's a that's a good reason to learn color mixing. You can get better quality paints and mix all the other colors. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you use if you use inexpensive paint, some of your color mixtures might come out a little bit differently. But like I said, you just have to adapt to the materials. You have to just get used to it. I think good paper is more important than brushes. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. The paper is way more important than the brushes. Um, I've had brush, all my brushes have, I mean, they don't anymore, but I had oil painting brushes that were really expensive and stuff. They shed all the time. It's just, you just deal with it, you know. So the brushes that I use, they're kind of expensive, but they're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. They're not like top of the line or anything, but they're Princeton, Princeton Neptune. They're really good. I definitely recommend these. Look these up on Amazon or whatever, or wherever online. Princeton Neptune. These are pretty good. I definitely recommend these. Um, so, yeah. Good painting is about skills and not good paints or brushes. That's true. I mean, it's it's somewhat true for sure. I mean, you can do great paintings with crappy materials. Like I said, it's just adapting to those materials. But anyway, nobody has any other questions about color mixing or anything? Hopefully not. We're 45 minutes into this, so I'm going to do try to do some... Uh, let's play around with some color now. Let's try to, like, create some different moods or something. You know, I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, <laughs> to be honest. But this, this is going to be really quick because I don't... It's not really about 
the landscape or anything. It's more about the color. That's what my focus is. So I'm just going to draw some quick shapes here for this landscape. And this is the reference photo, guys. And actually, uh, before I go any further, I haven't mentioned today, definitely check out my website, shaferfineart.com. I just recently put some drawings up there for sale. Some recent drawings from the other day, this last week. And uh, also some watercolors as well. And some gouache paintings. So definitely check those out on my website, shaferfineart.com. You can also support me on there. There's PayPal, Venmo, you know, Patreon, Bandcamp. I make some music. The music that you hear on my YouTube channel, on any of my videos uh, from like the past two years is music that I've made myself. So if you're interested in that, just checking it out. I'd greatly appreciate it. So anyway, you can see all that at uh, my website. Appreciate it, guys. So like I said, I'm just going to do some quick, uh, quick shapes here. Not too concerned about accuracy. We're just going to try to play around with a little bit of color. Like I said, I'm not really, I don't really uh, know what I'm going to do. You know, I thought about it a little bit, but I'm kind of open. I'm kind of open to... Honestly, if you're a beginner and you're just starting out, I really recommend doing smaller paintings. Like these sketchbooks that I've been showing you guys. You know, this is like a 6x8, 5x8. I mean, this was my very, very, very first watercolor sketchbook. Um, I think I started out with a plain air, actually. This was my... Uh, yeah, this was my neighbor's plant at the time. And uh, I did that from life. April 22nd, 2018. So this was my very first watercolor sketchbook. I definitely recommend you guys just painting smaller when you first start out. Just try painting some things from life. And uh, then try some photographs and just play around, man. Just see what you can do. But painting small really helps you because you know, you're not intimidated by the size and you're, you're more focused on creating an image, getting the values right. And it's, it's easier to just start over when you do small paintings. You're not as concerned about making them look good or anything. You know, it's, it's something that it's okay if you mess up, you just start over, start a new one. You can do them very quickly. I, I, I did small paintings for years, like, my first three years or something, I did like only small paintings. You know, I did a few large ones. It's good to do a mixture of both, but I really recommend focusing on the smaller paintings when you start out because it just, it really helps. It just really helps so much from what I've, my experience. And once you feel confident that you, you know, you, you can get the colors right, your color mixing is good, your values are good, then you can, uh, you know, be more confident, start moving up to a, a little bit larger. Mm. Yeah, there's a link to the br to one of my brushes in the chat, right now, uh, the quill brush on Amazon. Uh, Cubs Wind says, I went to the website to buy the fox and somebody beat me to it. Yeah, they go, they go quick, man. When I put them up there, like, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, that fox was up there for like two days, I think, or something. The one I painted Monday that I can't even show it to you because it's sold already. But that, that mountain landscape I did on Monday sold literally the next night. So, yeah, there's, there's sometimes I sell quick when I do a good one. But uh, anyway... Let's try to paint. Let's try to paint these. I'm just going to use this round brush. So what? Do, let's see. What kind of colors should we do? So I kind of, I kind of want to make. Um, you know, I want these to be different. Of course, I don't know if I want to start make one of them more natural, uh, or not. Or maybe I should just make both of them a little bit, you know, really play around with color. Maybe let's do that. Let's do that. So let's think of a color scheme. So we can try like a really, let's try like one of them. Let's do like warm and cool. This will be our focus, right? So maybe blues and oranges more. So 
so let's so even though there's a landscape let's try to focus on blue and oranges more so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to just use the primaries just so I can demonstrate to you guys you know I might use a little bit of some other colors but just because that's what I'm used to like this orange I have on this palette this this is actually Indian yellow but it's it's just a convenience color because I can easily just dip into that uh, this yellow ochre over here is a convenience color this purple is convenience there's a lot of colors I have on here that are, I use for convenience. And what that means is like when I'm out painting plain air, I don't have time to do all this color mixing most of the time. I just want to dip into the color right away. And uh, so let's try, let's start out. Okay, let's, let's start again. Let's start again. I don't know what I'm doing. So let's do blue and blue and oranges. That's going to be, be my focus, I think. Just trying to clean my brush quickly here, folks. Uh, so we'll start off with like a blue sky. We'll just use ultramarine, keep it simple. Blue sky, right? And I'll dip into some water, kind of fade this down a bit, maybe a little more blue. Just a little bit of warmth in this part of the sky. Just the lights coming that way, so try to make that look a bit warm, right? Maybe not that warm. I'm trying to tone that down. So, okay, blue sky, boom, a little bit of warmth there. So let's see what we can create with this. Maybe one cool and one warm. Okay, that'd be cool. Did you wet the paper first? No, I didn't with this, because it's so small. I didn't really have to wet the paper because I could just fill it in. But if you wanted smoother transitions and stuff, yeah, wet the paper first. Um, most skies, if you paint the sky, you might as well just do wet into wet. I mean, just to keep everything soft. Um, so I'm going to change the grass color here. I'm not going to do, so if you guys can see the reference photo, it's a very cool green. It's almost like a cool green. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, we're going to make this like a warmish yellow, orangey grass. But this orange is way too bright. So what do we have to do? We need to gray it down a little bit. How do you gray it down? Well, the only other color left we have to use is blue. So we can just mix a little bit of blue into it. And that'll just kind of gray it, gray it down. Make it look, what I mean by that, graying it down, make it a little more natural looking, more of a natural color rather than such a bright color that doesn't look very natural. Because remember, if we mix all the primaries together in an equal type of way, we can get a brown color. So let's see what this looks like. We'll put this down for the grass. So like I said, just try and just try an interesting color scheme. Actually, I'm gonna go over go over the shadow area too. And actually, I want to keep this grass a bit lighter, so I'm gonna lighten this up. Went a little dark there. Yeah, I live in I live in Roseville. That's where I live. Right now. I'm in Roseville right now. <clears throat> so 
So here we go, we have more of like an orangey grass. And I'm not even really worried about if this is like natural looking or not. Um, the colors look a little weird on the screen here. I wish I could change the colors somehow, but... Um, it's good as it's going to get for you folks. It just looks a little more yellow on the screen for some reason. And actually with this pathway, I'm actually going to make that like a cooler pathway. Since we have all this warm around it, so I'm just going to use, I'm use more of a red and blue to get like a cooler, like a, like a purpley gray, right? And we'll, we'll make it, you know, we'll use a little bit of water, keep it real light. So once again, just like trying to push the warms against cools in a way. But I want to keep this kind of light because it's actually lighter than the grass. So just a light gray. And for the trees, we can make them green, but we can push them to either be warm or cool or both. Um, let's try to see if we can make them a bit warmer. But still make them appear green. Right? So how do you make a warm green? Well, blue and yellow with what? There's only one other color we can use, red. So really warm that up. We'll see what this looks like. So what I'm painting right now is all the light of the scene. We're going to come back, put the shadow in at the bottom, maybe some other shadows and stuff. So this is a very gray, green. I can soften some of these edges a bit, give it more of a foliage look, more texture, brush light, you know, dry brushing. But here we have some really warm looking trees, pretty cool. Do the same over here, a little bit of trees back there. So like I said, this is just one version of this painting. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on the next one above it up here. We'll try some different kinds of colors though. Try to really, maybe, maybe we'll try to add some really strong colors to the next one and just really play around with color. I'm keeping this one pretty natural looking. So, you know, I'm just basically just experimenting here. So these back here could be much softer. What brand is your palette? Uh, I'm not really sure. It's some like really cheap Chinese brand or something. It's like, it was like six bucks or something. I'm not sure the brand, to be honest. I don't think that it really is a brand. Um, more vibrant colors for the next one? Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's what I try. Do you ever use a green paint without mixing? Do you ever use a green paint without mixing green? Yeah, I do. Sometimes I'll use uh, this Viridian that I have here. This is like a cooler green. This is the only green I have in my palette. So sometimes I'll use this Viridian as a base. And then I'll mix like yellow into it or blue into it. Usually I always have to mix something else into it because it's a very unnatural looking color. It's almost like spearmint toothpaste or something. You know, you can see it on the, on the rag here. So it's just very... Uh, unnatural looking. So you normally have to mix something else into that. But yeah, sometimes that's the color I'll use. And like I said, I'll just tweak it with yellow or tweak it with brown or blue. Those are kind of the colors I usually mix with that one or purple. Um, so let's see if this is almost dry. I forgot I had that fan. I could dry it really quickly with that fan real quick. Yeah, I mean, I really recommend mixing your own green because you have more control over it. You know, if you just use green straight from the tube, usually if you use any color just straight from the tube, 
you're gonna get like an unnatural look. I mean, there's there's times when like this, I used ultramarine straight from the tube. It's not a big deal. Uh, sometimes you can use yellow straight from the tube. Like there's cases where it's okay. Like if you're painting flowers or something, you're trying to get a really strong color. But most of the time, you do want to mix your own colors because like this, we're already seeing a harmony happening. You know, these warms and cools. This this is really a blue and yellow. Uh, excuse me, blue and orange color scheme, right? And that's what I'm going for with this one. So, it looks so yellow on this camera. I'm really sorry, folks. I'm not sure why it looks so bizarre on the camera. It just has more of a yellowy tinge, greenish yellowy tinge on the camera. This is more rusty, warm looking, what I'm seeing anyway. So now we can add in these shadows. I can go a little bit cooler with some of these shadows. Um, so this is an idea that I do sometimes. So for this shadow, you could just glaze like, I think most beginners would think, okay, well, I'll just use, I'll just use gray as the shadow, right? Like, oh, I'll just gray over the whole thing. Well, it's not really gonna give you a natural looking effect. So what I like to do sometimes is mix the shadow colors independently. So what I mean by that is like the shadow for this path, I'll make that a different color than the shadow in the grass. Because there's two different things going on here. So, um, so like for this pathway, I can make it much cooler looking than the grass because uh, you know, it's a cooler, it's a cooler pathway, even though when they're both in the light, this one's cooler, so I'll make the shadow appear much cooler. So we just paint in a quick shadow there, like boom, right? And we can soften that a little bit if we want, we can blend that out, try to, I guess. Right, boom, okay, soften some of this. And then for like the grass, it won't be that cool. There's still gonna be cools in it, much bluer, but we'll still keep it, we'll make it look like a grass shadow, right? So maybe something like this, you know, it's a bit cooler, darker. Let's try that and see what it looks like. Now it's a little bit warmer compared to that pathway. So we could add more cool if we want to, just a little bit. You know, it's all intuitive. I mean, and you can have a variety. You know, that's the thing. You can have a little bit of warm, then just make it a bit cooler. You can mix more blue into it. Like make it appear a little bit cooler in some areas. You know, cooler over here. And then, okay, that's enough cool. So we'll warm that up a little bit. And then paint the warmer shadow into it. You know, mix it up a little bit. And then some of it, it doesn't always have to be this dark. You, know, you lighten some of this up. It's probably a little too dark for most of it anyway. And we want some softer edges too. So while it's still wet, we can just try to soften some of that here and there. But this is all, I mean, this is what you guys gotta do. Just experiment, play around, try to figure things out, see what works for you, see what doesn't work. Try to try to develop your own process of, of painting. You know, it's very hard to teach how I paint because I paint so crazily. <laughs> you know, like I, I do stuff in a not, not very, uh, What's the term? You know, it's just, uh, it's, it's intuitive for me, but it, maybe it's not very traditional compared to other watercolorists, you know? Sometimes I try to use more traditional watercolor techniques, but sometimes I, I paint like I, I'm still using oil paints a lot. Uh, it just depends on what I'm feeling that day. It, you know, I paint differently when I do plain air than when I do a bigger, painting here in the studio at home. So, 
you know, it's all, you just got to determine and explore, explore your own feelings about things and how you paint. So maybe for these trees, let's see if we can get like much cooler or something. I don't know. Like I just, this tree is further away from us. So maybe let's make it like cooler, cooler green, maybe, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just totally experimenting here with color. I've never really experimented a lot with color. I usually always make it look pretty natural looking, but I don't know. Let's just see what we can do here. So let's try something else. So I've been doing a lot of wet into dry. Let's let's wet these trees over here. Let's do like a wet into wet shadow. See what that does for us. I'm gonna use most of it over here. Let's just see what that does. All right, so we get like a softer look to it. Nathan says, by doing the shadow the way you did it, it's a lot more dynamic and interesting. Thanks, yeah, are you talking about this foreground one? Yeah, that's kind of how I always try to do stuff. I try to just use different kind of colors, but it still, it still appears as one big thing. You know, I kind of have a gap here, but you know, you can merge these together a little bit more solidly, make them softer and stuff. But, you know, that's kind of the gist of it is just having these different color mixtures and because usually when I'm painting from life outside, it does look like two different colors, you know? Like the color on the, the asphalt shadow looks a lot different than the color of the grass shadow. And sometimes they're different values, you know? Like this pathway, since it was actually lighter than the grass, it probably should have been a lighter shadow, you know? And that's something to play around with. Like maybe I can lighten this up a bit more. Maybe that would help. You know, I kind of like it the way it is, but I don't know. We're just playing around here. So let's lighten it up slightly and just try to lighten it up. I don't know, see what happens. Like what's gonna happen if we do that? I don't know. But I think people are too afraid to like play around like this and just experiment. Like, so yeah, maybe that looks better now, you know? Um, unconventional, yes, that's kind of the word I was looking for. You know, I think some of my methods are unconventional. All right, so, I mean, this, you guys get the idea. This is really warm against cool. Uh, and like I said, if I wanted to, like if you really wanted to, you could have like more pure notes of like blue into this in places. Um, go crazy with the color, you know. Um, it's kind of hard to see on this camera, unfortunately, folks. But uh, I think you guys get the idea of what you can achieve so let's let's try it. this is where it's going to look different. So let's try this other one, this next one. And let's let's try maybe a bit more stronger mixtures. So maybe not so natural looking. Let's just go I'm I'm going to use different. I'm not going to use just the primaries this time. I'm going to use some of my own colors. You know, this let's use this turquoise for the sky a little bit. Get more of an interesting uh, sky color, maybe. I'll take the tape off in a little bit once we finish both of them. So I'm going to wet the paper first this time. So let's do wet into wet sky. So we'll use a different method this time. Actually, let's, let's, should we just wet the whole thing? Um, 
Yeah, I think we can make a t-shirt with a lot of stuff that I say. Like somebody a few years ago said, like, you should have a t-shirt that just says pretty cool. Because I always say, oh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I've been saying that since I was a kid. It's just like something I say all the time. So we'll use more ultramarine towards like the top of the sky. And then maybe like more turquoisey down here at the bottom. Because it gets a bit warmer. You know, if I wanted to, let's 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 do that. Let's paint the trees right now too. Oh, I just dripped some water into that. Using too much water here. So let's paint the trees at the same time so we get like a soft edge on these trees. So I'm just wetting the trees now. And like I said, this is all experimentation. This is what I encourage you guys to do. So what kind of trees should we make? Let's do more of like a Maybe more like the photo, just like a cooler green or something. You know, I just want it to look different than the other one. Let's just see what kind of vibes we can get here. Maybe a little bit of this Indian yellow. We'll make it a little bit warm. You, you always, you kind of always want some of your greens to be, have a little bit of red into them, a little bit of warmth. Because it's just going to look more natural doing that. So already, see we're getting some different colors here. Let's try to really yellow up some of this stuff. Softer edges, getting that nice bleeding. What color should the grass be? Let's do a, hmm. Yellow and Viridian. Yellow and Viridian grass. Let's try that. A little bit of brown down at the bottom there. Yeah, I definitely want to start playing around with color a bit more. <clears throat> I think that's what I'm going to start doing. Because that, that painting I did on Monday, the mountains, where I, I used only like two colors. I really liked that painting. And uh, I was kind of sad to sell that one so quickly. Because I like having them around for a little while for me to look at <laughs> normally. But it was cool. I mean, I'm, good to, I'm happy to sell them. I'm glad that somebody's... You know, interested. Wow, this painting looks so bizarre. I think I made the sky too dark, but that's all right. Let's just keep going with it. Let's keep rolling with it. I think once I add some shadows, we'll we'll uh, we'll see what it looks like. But totally different than this one so far. And that was kind of my goal. You know, just see what. See what what what's gonna happen if we make some crazy looking colors. There we go. Uh, this should dry pretty quickly here, folks. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this has been helpful. Um, look good already, even before you paint it. <laughs> uh, thanks. Appreciate it. 
The upper one makes me remember one of those sad movies with happy flashbacks. Yeah, it does kind of have like a nostalgic vibe to it. Huh? It's kind of interesting. What's making the shadows big trees on the left? Oh, you mean the shadow on the front? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, big tree. There's big trees on the on the left. Pretty sure. What if you go cooler with the shadows, like purple? Yep, I was gonna. That's what I was gonna do. Thanks. Yeah, I didn't think about purple though. That's a good idea. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do like purple. I was thinking of putting in some of the uh, cyan from the sky too to kind of get more of a. But this will be an interesting harmony, like this cyan, the green, and then the blue, or the purple. I mean, cyan, the green, and the purple. That's kind of a cool uh, harmony. So let's let's see. Yeah, because this is all very like acidic, kind of a green. So let's see if we can what this will do. Let's see what this looks like. It looks really nice, man. That was a really good suggestion. Like I said, I'm going to mix some of the cyan in there. I want to see what this looks like if I drop some of that in there. Just trying to get a little more continuity from the, uh, the sky a bit, like harmony. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Just playing around. Completely experimenting. But I do like that. I do like that purple in there. That's really nice, actually. Okay, for this pathway, we can make, maybe the pathway we can make more cyan. Add some purple in there too, just needs a little bit purple in there. I forgot to put this shadow in the last painting. It's like a shadow coming off that tree. I do like these purple shadows. That's really cool. So if you just add these little kind of uh, bits of color where it starts it starts harmonizing more overall. That's how you get that's how you get kind of a harmonious more of a harmonious uh, color scene, color scheme, color whatever. Uh, you know, if you just use a small bit of color, like if I just use a little bit of red, bright red, like right here, it's not going to be as harmonious, you know, it's going to disrupt the whole painting a bit. So you want to use a little bit of red everywhere else to really harmonize all together in a way. So that's kind of what I did here with this cyan and the purple. I tried to use, if I use purple up here, okay, I try to use it in the, the trees too. And then the same thing with this turquoise color, cobalt teal. You know, I kind of, since I use that in the sky, I try to use it a little bit everywhere else as well. Um, 
So pretty interesting. It looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I wish I had more time. I wish I had more small paper like this. Um, you know, I could do another one on the back of this color mixing thing. But uh, I don't want to go in here too long. I don't want everybody to fall asleep watching me. Yep, no worries, Deborah. I was just saying that, yeah. The purple neutralized the green a bit. Yeah, it did, actually. It did. It's actually uh, ultramarine violet deep, so it is kind of a reddish purple. Um, so yeah, definitely neutralize the green. I want to get some stronger purple in there. But yeah, uh, pretty cool, man. This is pretty cool. It's definitely, you know, definitely a stronger, I use some stronger shadow values here. Um, but that's because I made, I made the trees and the grass a bit darker. And really the trees should be a bit darker, honestly. Um, I'm afraid to do that though, but maybe I should. But, um... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for this one. I don't think there's much more I really want to do to it. Or It's pretty simple. Like I said, we're just doing some color studies. Let's take this tape off of this one. This was pretty fun. I should do this more often, these little color things. I should really plan my larger paintings out like this. Just play around with different kinds of color schemes, really push things. So this one's more gray, more... Complementary color scheme, blue and oranges, blue and oranges. And then this one is more of a, I don't know what color scheme. I didn't really pick a color scheme, but more stronger saturated colors a bit. Uh, just a different, I mean, you totally, you, diff, you get a different vibe from it. Uh, just with the way the edges are. Um, you know, softer edges on the foliage. But this is where, when you experiment like this, you figure out what kind of things you like. You know, I actually prefer, I kind of like the harder edges here, but I do like these too. So, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. I like the lighter sky against the trees up here. I think this is more of a better value. Uh, stronger value. This one, the sky is just a little bit too dark for my liking, to be honest, even though it's, you know, kind of how it naturally is, but yeah, that color is so staining that I can't really get that color up, but it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. It's just uh, not to my liking, the value structure here, but it's cool adding in, seeing those strong bits of color in there. That cyan, the purple, it shows me that I can actually be a little more colorful with my work. And it still looks pretty natural. Uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. This stuff's a lot of fun. Yeah, I saw, I, I, I thought that, Nathan. I could, yeah, I knew that's where you're getting that from, adding that purple in there. That purple was really cool. Um, Yeah, I think Winsor & Newton would be fine. I have some Winsor & Newton Winsor Newton gouache paint. So, yeah, Winsor & Newton's a good brand. I used to use some of their oil paints as well. So, nothing wrong with that. But, um, yeah, I definitely want to do more of these color studies in the future. I think this was pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you know, definitely something different than I normally do. But, you know, these are just little sketches, just something fun. Uh, see, that's interesting. So everyone, so far, two people said they like the second one better. Um, but to be honest, I like the first one. I really like the first one better. Uh, but that's just me. I'm more attracted to warm colors, warm and cool complementary colors. And I know that about myself. And I know that I like grayish, more grayish tones and stuff and warm and cool, warm versus cool. That's really what I'm attracted to when it comes to artwork and stuff. Um, well, there you have it, folks. 
hope the color mixing was helpful. If anybody has any last minute questions, ask them now, please. Um, okay, somebody else likes the first one, I agree. The color of the sky brings the trees closer or makes them look further away to me anyway. Yeah, it's true. That's true. It could also be just how I painted them and drew them and stuff. Um, the first looks more nostalgic, dreamy type. I prefer it. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, like I said, anybody has last minute questions, just let me know. But uh, anyway, be sure to check out my website. Got some drawings on there from the live streams and some paintings from the live streams, all available for purchase. Pretty affordable, definitely affordable. And uh, there's other ways to support me on there. Check out this, my support page. I also have some blog posts and stuff on my website. So definitely check that out. Other info and helpful things over the years. So definitely check out all, all that as well. But uh, uh, So yeah. All right, folks. I don't see any questions. So thank you guys for tuning in. Next live stream will be a pen and ink. And um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the pen and ink, but we'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And I will uh, see you guys on the next one, I guess. Peace.